We went on a guided tour through the Top Kapi Palace and we're so glad we did. There's so much to see in these expansive grounds, it helps to have someone talk you through it. As it turns out, the Top Kapi got its name for its gate. However, before it was officially named, it was known as the New Palace. In 1460, Mehmed II ordered the construction of the palace to have a larger, more lavish court and grounds. The palace was completed in 1478 and eventually went on to house nearly 4,000 residents between the 15th and 16th centuries under the rule of 30 different sultans. Located on a beautiful portion of Istanbul's old city peninsula, the palace has manicured grounds, mature trees, and sweeping views of the Bosphorus. You can just imagine how grand it was to enter, as it is still just as grand today. The palace is unlike European palaces that have one large building surrounded by gardens. Instead, they have four progressive courtyards and gates that move you from public to progressively more private spaces. Walking through the Imperial Gate, the first courtyard was open to the public to enjoy the beautiful open gardens and greenery. The surrounding buildings include the Royal Mint and administrative buildings. This was a place for public ceremonies and processions and is said to be the most bustling of the palace squares. They would also perform any public punishments and beheadings here for all to see. The second courtyard you entered through the Gate of Salutation and this was a semi-private courtyard. Only members of the court or invited guests were permitted entry. Here is where the Imperial Council, the Harem, the Kitchen, Stables, and the Tower of Justice are located. We just left the kitchen section of Top Copy Palace and it was so interesting. Just like a lot of the other exhibits here, you're not allowed to take pictures or photograph, but what they do is essentially walk you through what the kitchen and the cookware looked like from the 15th century until the 19th century. And it's so amazing that at some points in time, they were preparing meals for 5,000 people. I think he's gonna go check out the exhibit. Here we were in awe at seeing the Imperial Court. It consists of two gorgeously decorated rooms where all the meetings took place. Scribes would sit behind the walls and listen, writing everything down for the Sultan. The Tower of Justice towers over the entire Topaki Palace and it is a visual reminder that the Sultan can see everything. Today they also have a display of arms and clocks in this area as well, but unfortunately no pictures are allowed. Here we saw the famous top copy dagger and the spoon maker's diamond, which is an 86 carat pear shaped diamond, the world's fourth largest diamond of its kind, and the most expensive display here at the palace. We just left two exhibits, both having gifts from other countries around the world. One had a selection of clocks, which was fascinating and they're encrusted in diamonds and jewels and gorgeous clocks. And then the other uh, was an armory, but not your typical armory because these are also gifts with jewels and gold. And the top copy dagger is there as well with emeralds the size of almost walnuts. <laughs> They're so big. We did visit the harem, which is a separate entry fee. The harem has tons of mystery myths and rumors about it. While no records formally tell us what went on, what we do know is that all of the women of the royal family lived here. So the sultan's mother, the wives, children, and concubines. The harem was also home to many servants and eunuchs that lived here to take care of everyone. The most important person in the harem was in fact the Sultan's mother. She made the most money, had the most power, and lived in some of the nicest living quarters in the harem. Sultan's bathroom. <laughs> Pretty fancy. It is said the palace was always under construction, for each sultan made his own changes, additions, and improvements. 
sometimes including creating his own quarters in the harem. We just got out of the harem and it was much larger than I thought it would be. It looks relatively small when you look at the overall palace on a map, but its hallways and rooms are like this labyrinth where you don't really know where you are. It must have been difficult to navigate when you first got to the harem. In the harem, the lower levels are more for the servants, and as you rise up, you get more opulent and more decorated. There's beautiful tiles here. The Isnik blue tiles are all over the place. You have a salon that does have furniture. Half of the harem's being renovated right now, so a lot of furniture has been removed, uh, but there's still a lot to see, and it's a gorgeous place. Moving towards the third courtyard, this was even more private and mostly for the royal family or few approved guests. There was an audience room, the Sultan's quarters, and the royal library and school. This exhibit at Top Copy Palace has been the one that I've been looking forward to the most. Within this exhibit, where unfortunately you can't take pictures or video, there is Moses' staff. There's a piece of John the Baptist skull encased in gold and jewels. There's a piece of his arm, John the Baptist's arm, also encased in gold. There's a, uh, a footprint of the Prophet Muhammad. There's a piece of the Prophet Muhammad's tooth that he lost in battle, as well as uh, pieces of his beard. It is so interesting and so historic. One of the things that I think is most interesting about this section of the palace is that they have someone, I'm not sure if they would be considered an imam or not, but they have someone in there that is singing the Quran, and this has been going on for centuries. So we were able to see him. He, is, he has his own dedicated room, and you can just stand there and listen, listen to him sing, and it's such a unique experience. My favorite building in this area was the library. Gorgeous blues, yellows, and golds adorn the sun-filled room, and they feature one of many domed ceilings we came to admire. Moving through the fourth gate, we went on to see many other beautifully adorned spaces. Today the palace is a museum and well worth a visit. We found ourselves in the final courtyard and enjoyed the restaurant they had that looks out with the best views over the Bosphorus. If you like this video, please be sure to like and subscribe.